So this is the tale of the legendary two coin trick. So it begins with the two coins right here. And a guy actually had slammed him down on me this one time, how it all began. And I said, he said to me, show me the legendary two coin trick. And I'm like, well, this is interesting. I could do this. I can get the two coins, give it a little toss up. And they seemingly go. And he goes, takes on the two coins, slams it down. No, for real. I know you know the two coin trick. And I go, no, really. I get the coins. Seriously. Put it away in a little toss up into the air, stuck now in the ether, gone just like that. Takes out another two coins, slams it down, for real. Okay. So I let them examine the two coins, make sure there's no trap doors, Spanish speaking chihuahuas, nothing to that nature. I wanna be fair before I even begin. We got the two coins, one, two, and the secret is quarter turn. Just like that. And you can now see, they turn to copper coins. <laughs> and they're examinable by the audience, which is always lovely. And so he says, okay, yeah, they're, they're real. They check them out, okay. Well, change it back. I'd like to see that. So I'm like, okay, very interesting. And I just give a little, another quarter turn. They turn to that, just like that, which is awesome. <laughs> I could even get these two, okay? I could even put them inside the pocket. Though the interesting thing is that they'll come back just like that. It kind of becomes a usual problem or a normal thing. I've at least made it a little bit easier for myself. I could take one of the coins and vanish them. Not totally perfect though. I mean, it's part of the problem. Like seriously, I can get that guy, put it away. And even though I put it away, it'll still reappear. Some would say it's an odd problem to have. Others would argue it is a very interesting one to have. So hope everyone enjoyed the performance. Like, share, subscribe as always. And in this one, it's an interesting effect. I really wanted to do the Presto Changeo, though without gas and see if it was even possible. I didn't even know. There was also roots in Dr. Sawa's work as well. You know, there, there's, there's some different stuff there. New York Coin Seminar, possibly Eric Jones. I credited some people. Let's get into it. <laughs> we have a Chinese coin we'll need for this effect or an odd coin or whatever is the end production you want to use. So it can really be anything that fits within the hand. Though I just tend to use a Chinese coin or a jumbo coin. I. Did, couldn't find my jumbo coin, so I opted for a Chinese. Either case works, okay? Two copper coins, you can find these on eBay, or two coins of the similar size to, your, to what you're using. So in this case, Walking Liberties, I have two Walking Liberties. I use two British one cent coins. There we go. And that's it, so five coins, no gaffes, it is great. So the Chinese coin, goes into the pocket okay and it's in the in this case my performer's right pocket so from your side it'll look like i'm in reverse so just performers right pocket okay and then the two copper coins they can actually be in one of two positions in performance i'll just tell you what was in performance and then i can give a quick alternative okay in performance i had these classic palmed with these two coins either out, or they could be finger palmed, saying up, saying, I'm gonna show you the legendary two coin trick, and then slam down the coins from finger palm. So it kind of seems abrupt, surprising, it's a great way to start the effect. And you have the coins classic palm, so you're fine. Working with this. It won't be bad, it's not anything like Dean Deal's work where he's like palming four coins at once or anything of that nature. Rest in peace, Dean, we love you. Though, it will be, just something to be mindful of, okay? So that's one position. The other position is that if you're feeling bold, you could actually have these started in finger palm. We start the whole thing, and when you're vanishing the coins, boom, okay? Boom. It, you could just it extend the hand and then act casual. It's a little more bold, though you can get away with it, which is really nice, because people don't know where the coin, coin or coins are. So in this case, one, two, and then you can actually transform them 
or in the, case, the original case was to show the vanish, showcase the vanish, it would look like this. One, two, toss up, go like that, and then reset like that. So that's one thing you could do. You could do it twice, three times. You don't have to worry about it. You just have to do it and then relax, be casual. You don't want to keep it up here tense and at it. It's just like matter of factly. So in either case, you would want to do it matter of factly. Boom goes. And if people question over here, you can actually have you're already set up to do the production over here, and then they'll go, wait, what? And then they forget about justifying this hand. So you're, you're covered in all cases if you choose to go down that route. Either case, with the coin, Chinese coin pocket, two classic palm. I'm going to do it the normal way for this case. I just love to keep the alternatives. Got that. These two cla uh, copper coins are classic palms. Okay. And, okay. and you want them aligned for this case. Uh, throughout the whole routine, when you have the coins that they come together after a click pass, you want to make sure they are not, I mean, just make the note now, you want to make sure they're not separated. You want to make sure they're as close as possible to being together because when you're moving coins from hand to hand, you can minimize the amount of noise you'll be giving off. If they are like this, uh, separated, and you try to head pass from hand to hand, it takes a little more time, you have to do extra motions, and there's more risk of sound. So just be mindful of that. It's not difficult. It's nothing in comparison to what I've seen in other series. <laughs> Brutal coin work. It's crazy. Uh, this is much, much easier, which I love about it. Okay, so, anyways, enough squawking. We're doing this. We have the two coins here, okay? One, two, okay? And how we do this is we do a finger palm. I usually, this is how I usually start off. We start off by having this coin here. I have it tilted. I'm doing like Eric Jones-ish gesture. I know it's a subtlety. And what we're doing is we're showing this coin right here. Okay, and we're gonna do a finger palm, finger palm transfer. You could you also use your thumb if you want for this case. It's it's all good because of the nature of how close your hand is. So you have options if you want to. Sometimes I do it. Okay, doesn't affect the vanish at all. So you put into this hand, the fingers close. You got this coin right here, and then now I'm perfectly set up. Again, copper coins here. One coin that uh, has been retained into the finger palm right here. So we were right here after putting into finger palm right here. We then use our first finger and thumb, take the coin. So now we're in this position. A lot of coins, you're like, whoa, this is crazy. We'll be fine. We are then going to do the JC Wagner click pass, which is just so beautifully classic. It looks like this. That's if you're letting the coin fall through, okay? That's normally what it looks like. If we're doing a double retention, which we are in this case, it looks like this. Nice. And nothing went through. Again, I will show it. I'll first actually show it. Boom. That's the first one. We're up to here. And then we let the coin... Per we practice it. This will take some practice. Letting the coin drop into perfectly aligned into the second coin that you're retaining. Okay? Go. And you keep up the motion. And it closes the hand. Okay? Not too much of a tall order if you do it in a relaxed manner and matter-of-factly. I just take a coin, I'll do it with you, and we'll, just, we'll do it slowly, okay? I can do a finger palm with the thumb added retention. Pretends to go into the hand. It's being retained right here. So, so far, we have the two coins. We finger palm one, okay? We show the second one. We do the J.C. Wagner click pass. Boom, okay? And then we got the two coins right there. And always work on maintaining the coins in the classic palm. It'll take some work that they don't fall out. And so you just have to work on feeling comfortable so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So after we've done that, we can give it a toss up. If you want, the alternatively, instead of after the, after the, uh, doing the motion, they, they see and seemingly hear two coins, ah, two coins being in the hand. And so you could also just put inside the pocket, pretend to put inside the pocket and then slam them down again. That's an alternative option. I just kind of like the whimsical nature of being able to just toss on up, adjust matter of factly. Seems cool. People going, what happened? 
and then being slung down the coin scan. Again, preference, you do however you like. I let you adjust it to whatever suits the mood. So we got the two coins and we've vanished it, we've shown it, okay? The second version, this is the alternative version that I use in the second phase, instead of just doing the same thing twice. You could, I liked it very little. I do the same way, start it off the same way, finger palm to there. Second one, I take it and I do this pencil vanish, which is where I have in the first finger and thumb. It's kind of my own thing. I haven't seen anyone else been able to really come close to this. No, I could be wrong. And then I open up the hand. So this hand opens, this hand opens as I let the coin drop from the first finger and thumb directly into that coin, okay? Brief, brief cover, okay? And whoever it is, if someone else created it, I'll credit them as well. It's just a really cool move. It's so natural, boom. And then your hand closes as this hand turns. It's a natural drop, turn. It's just, think of it, how would you naturally do it? You could also do it just twice. In many cases, I just do it twice. Pick it up, one, two, okay? And it tossed up. That wasn't perfect though. Let me, let me actually do it per better. Better, I should say. <laughs> okay, that's one, that's two, better. And we, though the reason I don't tend to do for two is because the coins can actually, it's hard to, a little bit harder to align if you do them both the same way, for me, just personal experience. That's why I just tend to do it, only do it once. And I just do it once, and I know I can nail it much easier, and then toss it up. So I have a preference doing it finger palm, the first one, second one, just a toss. And I can do this straight while looking at the camera without looking at it, I know I got it. And also it's perfectly aligned, so I don't have to worry about it, okay? So the first two phases are now pretty much covered. It's, in the beginning we say, I know you know the legendary two coin trick. Sign down the two coins, pick it up. In the beginning, in the first phase, we pick both of them up like this, finger palm. Okay, that's the first one, goes in, and then we adjust for the JC Wagner click pass. Okay, toss on up, goes. They say, we wanna see the two coin trick, slam it down. Okay, take the coins. Again, this one with the finger palm, I start off with the finger palm. Second one, I do the pencil style vanish. Okay, and I'm doing this while directly looking at the camera and I nailed it, it's so nice. Toss up, they go, no really, I wanna see it, slam it back down. Okay, and now you're at this point. Once you're at this point, you let the people examine the coins, whoever is a spectator in this case. I had to do this with no cover, so it was a little bit more risky just doing this on camera. Though in real performance, you got all the cover in the world with natural misdirection being with the coins. And just seeing the same thing over and over and over again, seems like there's not could be nothing else in your hands, which puts you in a really good position. So they're examining the coins, and while they're doing that, you're gonna do a quick hand wash these coins from hand to hand so you can be set up for the next phase. So I have the coins of classic palm. I then meet the coins at the finger palm directly where they would be at. And if you were to do in finger palm, you then let the coins drop. That's why you want them aligned so you don't get noise, okay? So that's why I, I moved them so you can hear that just a little bit of movement can cause noise. So that's why you want to practice for them to be aligned. It, it does, sometimes you could get away with it just it's best to have them aligned, okay? Drop them into there, okay? And then we hand wash our hands up. For anyone really burning our hands, we're fine. We're just stretching our hands and people go, oh, okay, wow, his hand, his, this hand was empty, is what they'll be assuming. And then you can relax. And now you've got the two coins over here set up for the next phase. We do the same thing as we did before, the same two phases, though now we have the coins here and we just keep on hand washing, essentially. So <laughs> it's really crazy, which is why I said earlier, you can actually have the alternative and it looks the version as well. You'll see. We got the coin, finger palm, JC Wagner click pass into this hand. And this time you give a blow, quarter turn, whatever you feels right. And then boom, you got the cop coins like that. Awesome. And then now they're examining these. These are a real showpiece. They're like, how did these coins appear? Now they're examining them. You got a couple seconds of heat off you, which is lovely. Then you take the coins from finger palm. Okay, they're in finger palm. And do a finger palm to finger palm transfer while hand washing. So finger palm, 
Get a finger palm. We then come forward with our hand, like so. It's just like we're hand washing. Boom, show our hands. We don't have to make a big deal about it. We just do it casually, boom. And then just relax. You can even do this gesture if you want. Not necessary. Boom, and relax. And now you've hand washed the coins. You need to transform again, and you set it up without having to need a gaff, which is nice. We got the coins, okay? And then you can do these phase two of the first thing we were doing. So in this case, finger palm. And then second one, you can do the pencil vanish like four. And because we set the, up the coins in here, whatever presentational gesture you want to use, boom. And you can show they change back. Whoa, great. So it's the same phases for phase one, or the, the first time when you're just vanishing them to when you're transforming them. It's just so cool how sim simple it could be, though there's a different effect now happening. It's just like, wait, what? Mind boggling. So from here, we've got the copper coins and finger palm. We then take the few coins. You can either pick them up, transfer them if you want, or just pick up these first finger, second finger, thumb. Okay. And now we're going to do a thumb palm. And you want to be mindful of your angles of this. Though, and it doesn't even have to be perfect. You, you just pick them up into thumb palm. Okay. You can take these coins, balancing them on your first finger, second finger, and thumb, making sure not to touch the coins in finger palm. Okay. Don't want that. Though, it do, it's not the worst thing in the world if there's noise, if you're doing this briefly, because there's two coins here. Okay. You get the, into thumb palm. And then toss. You're going to do a like a bobo switch kind of thing where you toss the copper coins into the hand, which is nice. Instead of showing them transform though, so let's go back. Let's go back there in finger palm. We are, these coins were in finger palm. These two coins are right here. Pick them up, boom. And instead of transforming again, we instead put them away inside our pocket. And it puts us in a really, really good position. So they assume, okay, they're gone. And then I could do this really cool phase. I don't, I don't hold it out right here because then you have the possibility of flashing. I just come around like this and it's a really cool gesture and your hand comes around and then closes like so really fast and a cool motion. You can show the two coins came back just as you said, just even if you put them away, they keep on coming back. It's this monotonous kind of thing. It's just like the magic is happening seemingly on its own and we're all just going for a wild ride, which is great. I then say, I have been able to make the problem a little bit easier. I take one of the coins and that just as before. And so I should mention one gesture I do is I show the coins like this and then I drop into finger palm and display it before I vanish. Just a little subtlety. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So we got the coin and then we show it vanished. Boom. Yay. It's gone. And then from here, we've got the coin retained in finger palm right here. We've got this coin. I just tend for my own humor to do a switch. Uh, this is the actual bobo switch, which is first finger, second finger, thumb. We have it right here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to toss, as we're tossing the hand, we're gonna let go of this coin in finger palm while we're going to get this coin and move it into finger palm using the thumb. So it's like a two in one action. So I toss as I move the coin out of view. And you can take your time because the, coin right here is that has to go first that boom and you drop it and it doesn't even have to be perfect like perfectly moved in there rarely has it ever been for me i just toss in there and as i relax I, my fingers naturally curl around it and then boom no one judges the hand it's so great so i know it's not necessary you could just toss it like this you could literally openly toss it i just like to add a little bit of mystery so it seems like i'm doing something when Kind of am, kind of not. It's like I'm switching a coin for the same coin. It's just more of uh, a thing. And you see the motion. You see a brief motion of the coin going across in this case. I don't try to make a big deal of it. It's just the conviction. They say, okay, well, there's. it really did go in there. It has to go away. Because they believe the other coin has actually vanished. I bring it back. People are going, no way. And during this time, I'm actually being able to pick out the Chinese coin. And I have it in finger palm, like so. So I go to my pocket, find the Chinese coin, pick out my pocket. I'm too lazy to choose another pocket, so I actually go through my th the whole pocket to go through all the coins just to find it. Though I have pretty accurate fingers, so I can just boom, 
and I got it. So, Chinese coin. Yay. Anyways, the proper way to do this is to put the copper coins inside your another pocket as you put them away when you're reproducing the coins. Though sometimes I may just throw everything together and just like to have a little bit of fun trying to get myself out of wild situations. Anyways, we get the coin right here. We've produced the, the one Walking Liberty half dollar right here. We have the Chinese coin right here and the finger palm. So going back again, real fast. We have two coins, one goes away or vanishes, boom. Okay, one coin remains. And from here, we give it a toss. Coin goes to the pocket. And you say, no matter how many times it put, goes to the pocket, the coin will reappear. And you can produce off a spectator's shoulder for that case. I have stolen out the Chinese coin. I show it by the first finger, second finger, and thumb of the dominant or left hand in this case. I then come around and I just tend to do a, a spellbound clip. You can do a little spellbound clip where you clip a coin with your thumb and the web of your thumb and first finger, this area right here. We clip it and then we leave behind the coin that was in finger palm in the place of the silver walking liberty half dollar with the first finger, second thing, finger and thumb right here. Okay. It doesn't look great right now though. Give it one second so we can show the coin. We can do a little wrist turn. When you clip the coin, replace it, first finger, second finger, thumb, give it a little wave, and then you can get the coin. Now, if you have a jumbo coin, insert jumbo coin here. I'm just using a little interesting premise. I wanted to just be clever with the ending of it. So I was thinking, you know, this may be an odd one to some, an interesting one to others. And it just ends on a little sweet note. It just goes, wait, where did that Chinese coin come from? And then they can examine that. The coin is in thumb palm, which can be dropped into finger palm at your first leisure. Again, if I'm standing, it's so much easier. I have all the room and availability to just change palms whenever I want, which is nice. I forget that I'm left-hand dominant. <laughs> uh, I, I Dominant, receiving, recessive, I, I forget. I usually have to be ambidextrous for these tutorials. <laughs> Anyways. So that is the, the routine. I'll actually go over it just one time and then we'll close out from there. So just an, a general overview now that I've pretty much covered everything. I'll just talk about it as I do it. Okay, the copper coins are in the classic palm. Chinese coin, it goes into the pocket. Two coins right here, okay. So you say I want to show you, an, I want to show you an amazing coin trick, or this is a tale of the legendary two coin trick, or you want to see something crazy, boom, slam down the coins. However you want to play it. So we got the coins, and so this is the tale of the two coin trick. That's the first one. This second one right there, and you can give it a toss up, and it goes like that. It goes like that. And then you can slam it down, say no for real. It's like wizardry. It just keeps, it just plays out of nowhere. Kind of nice. So we get these coins. So this is the first one again. And then the second one, you could take it and then do a pencil vanish and a toss. And it goes again. And same way, slam it down, show it again. And they say for real. You let them examine these as you transfer from classic palm to the what was it? The finger palm over here. We then take the coins. One, two, same as the first phase, the first sequence. Boom. Show they changed. Amazing. They want to see it. Finger palm transfer. Boom. We then, so now it's from finger palm to finger palm. Now they're over here. We have the coins here set up. One, two, okay. They've transformed. They're not perfectly aligned right here, though it's fine. We'll make it work. And the, after, at the second phase, then you can breathe the little sigh of relief because you can, you're, if you're at thumb palm sequence, well, you're, you, you, you will be fine. Ah. <laughs> First finger, second finger, clip the coins right like so. Boom, into thumb palm. 
both coins go into thumb palm, toss the copper coins into the hand, put them inside the pocket. Okay, do not go for the Chinese coin just yet. We will get to that. Hand comes around. Then we can show the uh, walking liberties come back and your hands are empty, which is nice. We then take one of the coins, let it fall into finger palm after displaying it. Boom, put into the hand. The other uh, hand takes the coin, or this hand takes the coin. Give it a little wave. Gone. Boom. Okay. And then from here, then I toss a coin to the pocket. Okay. Be casual so I can actually go and find the Chinese coin. I can find it because of the hole in the middle. Grab into finger palm as I go and produce the coin right here. I say this is a very odd problem to have. And then I can give it a little wave. Others would say it's a very interesting one. And then you can take it to the other hand with the thumb palm. Show it like so, real briefly. Set it down. And you're good. And then at the first moment uh, that the tension's off you, you can move it from thumb palm to finger palm. Casually. And then boom. There you go. They're amazed. And then after they examine the coin, at your first leisure, you can also ditch it. If, it, if you're in really no heat, then you can just ditch the coin in your pocket. And you're all set. And then take the coin, put it away. Done. So... Hope everyone enjoyed it. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece. I just really found it really interesting. I really wanted to be able to do Presto Changeo from Mike Gallo's work. I just really love the routine and all his versions of it. I just really wanted to be able to do it gaffless so it could be able to be examinable in many cases and more open and a little bit more free. And so this is what I come up with. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. Like, share, subscribe as always, and see you in the next video.